Amen. Good morning. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Another blessed Sunday. Amen. Another blessed Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank God for the honor and the privilege to be before your presence virtually one more time. Amen. Thank God. Amen. For another day in the land of the living. At this time, uh, we welcome everyone to Liberty Pentecostal Church of the Apostolic Faith. I am Pastor Sheila Johnson, and I am honored, amen, that you have tuned in to visit with us today virtually uh, to hear the word of the Lord. So we're going to open up our service with uh, prayer, and then we'll go into the message for today, and we will rejoice, amen, because God has made us glad. He has made us glad. Amen. So we thank God for being our Lord and Savior. Amen. And our soon coming King. Amen. So let's at this time bow our heads and then we will pray and then go into the word of the Lord. Dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before your presence another day, Lord Jesus, thanking you for this present day, the day that we haven't seen before. It is a gift. Amen. You have given us the gift of life for this moment. And for that, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your mercies that were new this morning. You are faithful, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness unto us, your people. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all that you have done for us, all that you will do for us. We thank you for every provision, every benefit. We thank you for all of your mercy, all of your grace, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for the word of God, and we thank you for such a great salvation. Lord, we ask your blessings, Lord, on our world, Lord Jesus, on our world. Lord, we ask that you will continue to send forth your healing, Lord Jesus. Turn people's minds and hearts unto you, Lord. Bless every governmental leader, Lord Jesus, and help your people, the body of Christ. Lord, bless every preacher this morning, their families, Lord Jesus. Bless everyone under the sound of my voice. Bless their families, Lord Jesus, and Lord Jesus, perfect all things that concern us, Lord. We thank you for all these things. We ask your blessing on the word this morning, that you would open up our hearts, that you would open up our ears, give us understanding, help us to be doers of your word and not hearers only. Bless your speaker on this morning. Lord Jesus, help us in every way. We thank you because you love us so much that you will send forth your word. Lord, bless us. Save someone on today, Lord. We ask that you remember those that are backslidden, that you would draw them back to you, Lord Jesus. Touch their hearts and their minds wherever they are. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your long suffering. Bless us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So at this time, we're going to go into the scripture. And once again, you can always contact us by calling the number on your screen. Uh, leave a voicemail message or you can send a direct message to us and we will get your message for your prayer request. If you'd like to become a member, let us know. Amen. And we will um, make arrangements with you to sit down, talk with you and share uh, what it is uh, that we believe that the Lord expects from all of us as people. So give us a call uh, if you need to talk or if you need counseling or if you want to be baptized, whatever your spiritual needs are. Uh, where we can be of service to you in the name of the Lord. Please give us a call. Amen? Amen. Amen. So now, um, let's turn into our Bibles to Matthew chapter 26. And we're just going to read one verse here today. And I may not be long on today. Uh, but hopefully we can glean something from the word of God whereby our souls will be blessed. Amen. Still fighting a little cold here, um, but we're going to do our best. So if my voice sounds a little hoarse, it's okay. I think as long as we can hear what God is saying, we'll be good. Matthew chapter 26, and we're going to read verse 42. And it reads, he went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Amen. And it reads again, he went away the second time and said and prayed, saying, Oh, my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it. Thy will be done. Amen. And so we're going to draw our topic from the latter portion of that particular verse. Amen. 
I'll just say yes, Lord, is our topic for today. I'll just say yes, Lord. Amen? Amen. So uh, in this particular uh, scripture, we see our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And at this time, he's uh, going forth and uh, to uh, his mission and his calling, amen, on this earth is to give his life a ransom for many. And so he knew that he was going to be crucified, but he's praying here in the Garden of Gethsemane. He knows that his earthly ministry is almost complete and that he's going to give his life. He is the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. And so as he's here in the garden and he's praying, he knows that in the flesh he does not want to go to the cross. Amen. Because he lets us know in the scriptures, he said, uh, the flesh, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen. Amen. So the whole point of today's message is I'll say yes to the Lord because the Lord has a divine will for all of our lives. He has a divine purpose for all of our lives. And um, God wants to fulfill his purpose in all of our lives, just as he sent his only begotten son. Amen to die for the sins of the world, Jesus Christ, had, he had an earthly mission. Amen? So he came to seek and save those that was lost. He, he came to take away the sins of the world. Amen? So can you imagine where we might be today if Jesus Christ had not said yes to God? Amen? So God has a divine will to bring about his purposes. He is the creator of the heaven and the earth. And so everyone has a specific purpose. Amen. And God has a perfect will for all of our lives. Amen. And so we might ask ourselves, uh, what is the Lord's purpose for me? So God has general purposes for all of his people. He wants us all to fear God and keep his commandments. He wants all of us to come into covenant relationship with him. Amen. And so we would say, why? Well, why should I, you know, fulfill the will of the Lord? Why should I want to please God? Why would I want to do what it is that God is asking me to do? Well, first of all, because he's sovereign. He is our creator. He is the master of the universe. Amen. Sometimes here on earth we have um, bosses, you know, that we have to give an account to and we're seeking to please them because we're looking for some form of benefit from them. Well, the benefit that we receive from the Lord is his favor on earth and not only that, but eternal life. The Lord God, he is the only one that has eternal life. So, when we seek to please the Lord and when we seek to do his will, God will reward all of those of us who are obedient to his will. Now, there's two sides to every coin, but on the same, uh, with that same coin, on the flip side of it is that God will punish the disobedient. So it's in our best interest, amen, to be happy and to serve the Lord in gladness and to fulfill his perfect will for our life. Now, sometimes the things that God will for us may not always be pleasant. As we can see here with the scripture text that we've read in St. Matthew about Jesus Christ uh, before he was arrested, before he had an unjust trial, and before he was led to be crucified. Amen? And so it tells us what Jesus said. It said he went away again the second time and he prayed. So he was in the garden praying. Amen? And he said, Oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. And he was meaning the cup of suffering. Amen. So sometimes God's will is that certain, certain situations that we have in life, we have to suffer some certain things. Amen. For the benefit of ourselves and for the benefit of others or for the benefit of the kingdom. Amen. And so Jesus Christ was going to suffer. Amen. For the benefit of, benefit of all mankind. Amen. He was going to die in all of our places. Amen. So that we would have a right to the tree of life, that perfect love of perfect expression of love of God, amen, that he would go to the cross in our place so that we can be saved, amen, eternally. So um, I'll just say yes to the Lord. The title that we have today, it's all individual. It's all personal. We all have to make a personal declaration that I'll say yes to the Lord, amen. We cannot give an account for anyone else, but we can say, I'll say yes to the Lord because it's, God has made us uh, 
people who have choice. Amen. But we want to make the right choices. We know in the Old Testament, God told Israel, he said, I set before you this day life and death and choose life. Amen. So we want to choose life. We want to choose the will of the Lord because the will of the Lord will lead us to eternal life. Amen. So we want to be able to be obedient to Christ. Amen. We want to say, yes, Lord. So whatever the Lord's will is in our life, we want to say, yes, Lord, because we know it's going to be for our good and for the betterment of the kingdom of God. We're going to please him. Amen. So we want to say yes, Lord. So whatever God is asking of us, we want to be say, be able to say yes. We want to be able to surrender to the will of the Lord and be able to please the Lord. So Jesus Christ is our perfect example of submitting to the will of God. Amen. So all of the times when we submit, it's not always uh, going to be easy because of our flesh. And in many cases, it'll be a sacrifice. Amen. And so Jesus Christ sacrificed his life so that we all could be saved. Amen. And so God is asking us sometimes to make sacrifices. Amen. So he said, if this cup may not pass for me, this was a cup of suffering. He didn't in the flesh. He did not want to go to the cross, but he prayed. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So in every decision, decision, every choice that we make, we want to know what the will of the Lord is, and we want to submit to the will of the Lord so that we may please our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen, God Almighty, amen, so I want to please God, you know, so it has to be a personal declaration, you have to say today, I'll just say yes, I want to please God, so we want to be able to please the Lord and perform his will and not our will in, in this life, amen. And so we, those of us that are in covenant relationship that say that we're Christians, we ought to be able to give to God what he asked for because he says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we gave Jesus Christ our life if we went into covenant relationship with him. And so we are not our own anymore. Our lives are hid in Christ. So that means we are the servants of the Lord. Or we're, we, I don't like to use the term slave, but we are Christ's slaves. We are Christ's servant. So whatever it is he desires of us, we ought to be willing to do. We ought to be willing to perform. Just like when we're on a job, our boss say, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want you to do the other. And so we seek to please that boss. And so we do those things because we're looking for a paycheck at the end of the week or the pay period. And not only that, we may be looking for promotion to grow. Amen. And so with Jesus Christ, uh, we're looking, God is going to reward us. You know, when we submit to his will, he's going to reward us. So uh, he's the one that rewards us. At the end, he has a great reward. We have eternal life. He's the only one that can give eternal life. So we're going to be with him throughout eternity in his presence. And that's a glorious thing because the Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hands, there are pleasures forevermore. So everything in righteousness that you can desire is all going to be in Jesus Christ. So God is going to reward it. It's going to be more than a paycheck after this pay period. Amen. This temporary thing, but God is going to reward us. Amen. So we ought to be able, it's, it's, it's nothing but blessings and submitting to the will of the Lord. Now where the problem comes in with us submitting, amen, is not having the right mind sometimes, but what Jesus Christ said, he said, my spirit is willing, amen, but the flesh is weak. And so our flesh, because we are in this Adamic nature, you know, this body of sinful flesh, amen, it might go against the will of God sometime. And as a matter of fact, it does at all times. Our flesh wants to go against the will of the Lord, but we have to bring our flesh into subjection to the power of God. Amen. Through knowing what God's word is. And not only that, but through fasting. Fasting will help us humble this flesh, amen, to break down this flesh so that we can do the will of God. And so we know our Lord and Savior he fasted often, amen, and not only that, but he also prayed, amen, and so God lets us know prayer and fasting will help us to submit to the will of God, amen, amen, so the Bible lets us know without faith it's impossible to please God, amen, for he, he that cometh to God must believe, amen, and believe that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him, so we have to have faith in order to submit to God, amen, so we have to know that God's will is what's best for us, 
even though we may not understand it at the time, we may not like it in the flesh at the time, but we have to be spiritually minded to know that God's will is what's best for us. So I'll just say yes, Lord. So whatever we're facing today, whatever God's will is for us, we say yes to his will. Now, it's not always bad, you know, his will for us. Sometimes, you know, the things, well, it's when I say it's not always bad, it's not always a suffering effect to us. Amen. But everything that we surrender to as far as God's will is good for us ultimately because we know that the Bible says all things work together for the good to those that love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Amen. So prayer is essential to submit to the divine will of God. Psalms tells us, teach me, O Lord, to do thy will for thou art my God. Amen. Thy spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. And so we have to pray to the Lord, Lord, teach me to do your will. Sometimes it's not always easy, you know, for us to line up with the will of God. But if we pray to the Lord, the Lord can help us. Psalms 143 says, teach me to do thy will. And so that should be our prayer daily. Lord, teach me to do your will for you are my God. So we're surrendering unto God. Amen. The creator of the heaven and the earth. He said, thy spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Amen. Not only that, but Jesus, when he taught his disciples to pray, and he said unto them, when you pray, he says, say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. And so Jesus Christ taught his disciples to pray, so we have to pray. Prayer is essential to submitting to the divine will of God. We have to pray that the Lord would teach us to do his will and pray that his will be done. Amen. So prayer is essential to saying, I'll say yes to the Lord. I'll just say yes, Lord. Amen. To be able to say yes, Lord, we have to do some things. Amen. So we want to submit to the will of the Lord for our lives. Amen. And so by submitting to the will of the Lord, amen, it helps to divine, it helps to establish, it helps us to establish our divine relationship with God. It helps that relationship to grow, amen. The Bible says, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, that same person is my brother and my sister and my mother. So when we do the will of the Lord, we are related to Jesus Christ. Amen. We are in relationship with him. And that's a great thing to be in relationship with the Lord from glory. Amen. Again, he said, whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, that same is my brother, my sister, my mother. So we're in the family of God when we do God's will. Now we are acting like we're not in the family when we don't do his will. Amen. Amen. And so when we submit to the will of God, we have to do it wholeheartedly. Amen. Uh, not just, you know, half-heartedly. Ephesians 6 and 6 says, not with eye service, you know, as men pleasers, but as the service of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. So we have to do the will of the Lord from the heart. Sometimes we can get... Um, technical with it, you know that it's the right thing to do. It's not really in your heart to do it, but you just do it, you know, not knowing that you're really loving and serving the Lord. So it's just like when we're on the job, you know, we'll do things, but we do it as eye service. When the boss comes through, then we're really acting like we're working, but we're really not into it. But God wants us as his children and as servants of Christ do, to do the will of God from our heart. And a different type of translation says, do this not just when you uh, they are watching uh, as if merely to please people. So we're not just doing this to please our husband, our wives, or our boss or something, but we're doing what's right from the heart so that we can please God. He said, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Amen. So we want, God wants us to be wholehearted when we submit to the divine will of the Lord. Amen. And we should use God's divine will as a rule. Amen. For everyday life. Amen. As the Bible lets us know, it says for, uh, that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and we shall do this or do that. And so that's in the book of James because some of the brethren were saying, oh, we, they were boasting and bragging about, you know, they were glad that they had their wealth and the, the, whatever was going on for them. They said, we're going to go here and we're going to do this. So they had all these great plans about what they were going to do, you know, because things were going good for them. We're going to go here. We're going to do this. We're going to make money and, and make a profit. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to set up this business. 
God said, all such boasting is evil because your life is just a vapor. My life is just a vapor. So we ought to say, if the Lord will, amen. So here we are submitting to the Lord's will, you know, and, and having a rule of how we gauge ourselves. We say, if the Lord's will, we're going to, we plan to do this and we plan to do that. So we can't just say what we're going to do on our own. It's only if the Lord wills that we do it, that it'll take place. Amen. So we can't boast because all such boasting, the Bible tells us is evil. So we say, yes, Lord, you know, so I don't want to boast about what I think I'm going to do, but we say, yes, Lord, we will use that as a rule and say, if the Lord will, I will do this. And if the Lord will, I will do that. Amen. And so submitting to God and pleasing God, it is shown through our obedience. Amen. So so when we say, yes, Lord, that shows that we are obedient to the will of the Lord. We just surrender. You know, we give up our thoughts and our ways and what our desires are. And we consider what the Lord would have us to do. And that's the best thing to do because his will is the best. Amen. So we are letting God know, Lord, we honor you. We love you. And we choose to please you. Amen. And so uh, we look here, there's an uh, actual uh, example of uh, giving in to the will of the Lord or submitting to the will of the Lord. So when we obey what God tells us to do, it shows that we are saying, yes, Lord. Amen. So in the book of Acts, uh, after Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, he told them, he said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And so we read in the Bible, it goes on down, verse 41, it says, And they that gladly received his word were baptized. Amen. So they were obedient to the preaching of Peter. Amen. So they submitted to the will of the Lord from the preaching of the uh, the preaching, the message of the pastor at that time, or the preacher at that time. So they submitted. The Bible said, the end day that gladly. So that lets us know not everyone is going to do it. And not everyone is going to submit to the will of the Lord. But they that gladly received the word, they were baptized. And the same day, they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Amen. Amen. So 3,000 souls at one time submitted to God's will at that time. Amen. So we have a lot of great examples of people who surrendered to the Lord, of people who said, I'll just say yes, amen, people who surrendered unquestioning service to the Lord, amen, when God told them to do something, they said yes, amen, to the Lord. We remember Noah, Genesis 6 and 22 tells us, thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. So everything that God commanded Noah to do, the Bible says he did it. He just said, I'll just say yes, Lord. So he surrendered. His whole goal was to please the Lord. He know that his life was nothing without the Lord. So the same with us. Our life is nothing without the Lord. So whatever the Lord asks us to do, we ought to say yes, Lord. And it's individual. So we can't go to someone else and say, well, should I do what the Lord say? You don't ever ask anybody, should I do what the Lord say do? Amen. You just, when God say do this, this is what you do. It's not something that you confer with someone else because you're dealing with God Almighty, amen, not a man who is temporal, amen, but you're dealing with the eternal God, amen, so Noah did everything that the Lord told him to do, and let's just see what it is that God told Noah to do, amen, the Bible says that God said to Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth, he told Noah, make thee an ark of gopher wood, Room shalt thou make it in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. Now God told Noah to build an ark, first of all. So Noah had to be obedient and build in the ark. But not only that, God was very specific in what he told Noah how to build the ark. He said, make the an ark. He told him the type of wood. He said, of gopher wood. Now what if Noah had went and got, uh, uh, this tree right here looks good. I'll just use this. But he was specific. If God is specific in his instructions to us, that's what he wants us to do. He told him to use gopher wood and he told him to pitch it within and without. He told him that the um, 
length of the ark was supposed to be 300 cubits. So what if Noah had said, well, I don't feel like making a boat that big. I'm just going to cut it in half. Amen. He didn't do that, though. He told him, and the breadth of it, 50 cubits, and the height of it, 30 cubits. So God gave specific dimensions. Amen. So if God gives us specific instructions, that's what he wants us to do. He said, and a window thou shalt make to the ark. And in a cubit shalt thou finish it above, and the door of the ark shall be set in the side there. So put the door on the side, amen. So God is the greatest designer that there ever is. He created everything, amen. So he knows what's going to work. So he's better than all the engineers, all the scientists put together. Because whatever little knowledge they have, it came from God. But God is the greatest um uh, designer of all. He told Noah exactly what to do. Someone said that, you know, it was a lot of professionals that built the Titanic and it sank. But God told Noah, who was an amateur, to build, but he did it based on God's instructions and it lasted. Amen. It weathered the storms. Amen. Amen. But he told him, he said, a window shalt thou make to the ark and a cubit thou shalt finish it above and the door of the ark thou shalt set in the side thereof with the lower second and third stories. He told him, make a lower story a uh, second story and a third story. And he said, behold, I will do a new thing. So he told him about the flood. <clears throat> and then he goes on down. And he said, <clears throat> of every living thing of all flesh, he says, no, he said, but with thee I will establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, and thy sons and thy wives and thy son's wives. So he told him who all was going in the ark. Amen. Bring your wife in, bring your sons in and their wives. And then he went on down. He said, and of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark and to keep them alive with thee. They shall be male and female because God wanted them to be able to be fruitful and multiply after the flood was over. He said, male and female, procreate, be fruitful and multiply. All of them, he said, of the fowls after their kind and after the cattle after their kind and of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind. Two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And thou shalt take unto thee of all food that is eaten and thou shalt gather it together and it shall be food for thee and for them. So God told him to make the boat. Then he told him to take his family in there. Then he told him to take the creatures, every live creature in there. And then he told him to take food in there. Amen. And the Bible says in 622, and thus did Noah. So Noah did everything God told him to do according to all that God commanded him. So did he. Amen. So talking about a great example of rendering unquestioning service. So he didn't give God a lot of, you know, back and forth, you know, or what, you know, if the Bible doesn't tell us that, you know, it just says that he was obedient to what God told him to do. Amen. And the same thing with Elisha, you know, God, uh, he just, whatever God's will was right away, he accepted it because Kings tell us, uh, that Elijah departed. Uh, after he talked to the Lord because he had this conversation with the Lord, you know, after he was running from Jezebel, uh, but God had a conversation with Elijah. So uh, he God told him what to do. And so Elijah departed this and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen before him. And he with the 12th and Elijah passed by him and he cast his mantle on him. And so the Bible, he knew what that meant when Elijah came by and cast his mantle on him. He knew that he was being called of God to serve us. Amen. Elijah was a prophet. He knew and understand. Elijah knew and understand that Elijah uh, was sent to throw his mantle on him, that God was calling him into service. And the Bible says, even though he was plowing with the oxen, it said he left the oxen and he ran after Elijah. And he said, let me, I pray thee, kiss my father and my mother and then I will follow you because he knew that God was calling him to follow him for a service, to work, to be a prophet of the Lord. So he said unto him, go back again or go tell him goodbye for what have I done to thee? He said, you don't know what you just signed up for, but you're eager to do it. Amen. Amen. But we see here Elijah willingly after the mantle was thrown, all he said, well, let me just go back and kiss my parents and I'm going to go and follow you and do the will of the Lord. And not only that, but Elijah, when the Lord called Elijah, you know, he answered. The Bible lets us know. And also I heard the voice of the Lord uh, saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? 
Then said I, here am I, send me. So after the Lord had cleaned up Elijah's mouth, amen, and taken away his iniquity, he said, here am I, Lord, send me. So he was ready to render his unquestioning service to the Lord. He said, I'll just say yes to the Lord. Amen. So God was, sometimes God will put the question like that. Who will go from me? But God is waiting on you to volunteer. He know he's calling you, but he's waiting on you to say, yes, I'll do the will of the Lord. Amen. And we know, again, Jesus Christ was our perfect example because in another scripture, it tells us that Jesus said unto them, meaning his disciples, he said, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Amen. So he let them know, I'm not worried about this eating, you know, right now. He said, but my meat, you know, is to do the will of my father. So we have to, you know, be able to say, you know, I need to take care of God's business. Amen. Amen. And so we know in the garden of Gethsemane again that Jesus said, uh, he said, oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Amen. And so one of the other, so he said, I'll take this cup of suffering. If that's your will for me, I'm going to do it. Amen. Amen. And so Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, amen, she rendered unquestioning service to the Lord. We know that the angel Gabriel went to her and told her that she was highly favored and what was going to take place. And so she questioned him, well, how is this going to be, you know, seeing that I don't know a man, I haven't slept with a man, how am I going to carry this uh, holy child? And and so the, Abel, the angel Gabriel explained it all to her. And so her response this was Mary's response. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. In other words, I surrender to whatever the will of the Lord is for me. If the Lord wants to use my body to carry the child Christ, and if he wants me to be his mother on earth and, and raise him up, I'm going to do it. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed. And so sometimes God asks us to do things, and God's going to bring and get the glory out of it. But imagining her as a young virgin girl, not yet married and hasn't consummated a marriage and so she's engaged or betrothed to be married she's betrothed which means she is legally married they just haven't come together yet but she has not consummated her marriage they haven't come together but at that time a young person a young virgin a young woman becoming pregnant out of wedlock that was going to be a dangerous situation for her Except, you know, the person decided to marry her or if her father decided they didn't want her anymore, she would be cast out. You know, she would live a life, first of all, of being unmarried if the person decided not to marry her because she's pregnant out of wedlock. Um, so she's going to be, you know, a maid or she's going to be single all of her life, you know, or she could be cast out because her father rejected her for bringing shame upon the family. Amen. So she had to deal with all of that. How is she going to tell you know, people, well, I'm pregnant, but I'm pregnant with the Lord's, you know, with, with the Christ child. You know, people think that she's crazy. So she took a lot of risk, amen, trying to do the will of the Lord or accepting the will of the Lord. But God had to deal with Joseph and say, go ahead and marry her, amen, because the, she's, the child that she has is of the Holy Ghost, amen. So God had to speak with her betrothed husband, amen, to still take her to her and not touch her until after the child was born, amen. Amen. So Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ, she said, behold, the handmaiden of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. So she said, yes, I will be the vessel that God wants to use. He wants to use me. I'm going to say yes to his will. Amen. Can you imagine that God wanted to use your body? So everything that we have belong to the Lord. And if God wants to use it, we ought to say yes. You know, whatever we have, our homes, our cars, whatever we have, it all belongs to the Lord. And if the Lord wants to use it, we should say, I'll just say yes, Lord. Amen. We should surrender to the will of the Lord. Amen. And we know that David also, after he had served his own generation, the Bible tells us, by the will of God, he fell on sleep and was laid unto his fathers and saw corruption. In other words, he died, but he uh, did the will of the Lord. The Bible tells us that David did the will of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we know God cannot lie. He tells us that David and his generation, he did the will of God. Amen. Amen. And Romans lets us know when we make our requests, if by any means now, or Paul was saying that he makes requests. He said he was praying for the Romans. He said, make a request 
if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. So in other words, he was like, you know, um, I'm not going to say I'm going to come to you. He said, but I'm making a request. And so it's similar to what James said, you know, the rule that we live by, if it be the Lord's will, we do, will do this and we will do that. If the Lord is, if it's his will. And so Paul was saying that he's making a request or he's praying, uh, if by any means now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. He wanted to go to Rome to have some spiritual gifts with them also. Amen. But he said by the will of God. So when we want to do something, we ought to be praying, Lord, thy will be done. This is what we desire. But Lord, you let us know what your will is. Amen. And then Corinthians lets us know about the will of God. So it says, for after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. So if God is pleased with preaching, amen, we talked about being pleased. We want to please God. If God calls people into the ministry, they ought to say, yes, Lord, I'll just say yes. Paul had to surrender to the Lord. Let's just say yes to the will of the Lord. Amen? Amen. So God is going to do his work. Amen. And whatever God tells us to do, sometimes it might seem foolish, but we ought to say yes, Lord, because it's going to please God. So he said here in Corinthians, he said, after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom didn't know God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching. So God called people to preach, amen, to save those that believe, even though preaching seems to be foolishness to some people, but God is using it to save people. So that's why we surrender to the will of the Lord. We say, yes, Lord, amen. Yeah. Amen. And so Hebrews lets us know, by faith Enoch translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. So that's our goal, amen, by saying, yes, Lord, is that we want to please God, amen. We want to make God happy. So whatever God tells us to do, we want to say, yes, Lord, because we want God to be happy. Because if God is not happy, that's not good for us, amen, amen. But the Bible says, but without faith, because so when we say yes to the Lord, it has to be an act of faith. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that God is, and he exists, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we have to have faith and say, yes, Lord. Amen. Whatever God is telling you to do, do it by faith. Amen. And say, yes, Lord. Amen. And so First Thessalonians tells us, uh, Paul addressing the church at Thessalonica, he said, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how you ought to walk and please God. So there's a way in our everyday life that is pleasing to God. So there is a way to please God. Amen. In our everyday walking, not even just specific assignments, but in our everyday walk. So you might abound more and more. So he said, so that you might grow more more and more and, and increase more and more, but you want to be able to uh, walk and please God. And he said, for you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus Christ. So God will tell us what to do. He'll give us commandments and show us how to walk and please him. He said, for this is the will of God. Here we are again talking about submitting to the will of God. He said, this is the will of God, even your sanctification. God wants us sanctified, separated, from the world for his purpose and for his use. Amen. That you should abstain from fornication. So God said, if you want to please, please me, abstain from fornication. Amen. That means you're not sleeping and having sexual relationships with anyone that you're not married to. He said that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and in honor. So every one of us have to know how to control our body and, and bring it into subjection to the will and the word of God to possess ourselves in honor, which means we're not into any type of sin or sexual sin. Amen. We have to know how to please God. God wants us holy. Amen. He said, not in the lust of concupiscence, not in your lust, your evil excess desires, even as the Gentiles, which know not God, and that no man, so no sexual sin, amen, and that God knows that we have desires, and he's saying, get you a wife and get you a husband. The Bible says, he that findeth a wife findeth a good thing, amen, amen, so we need to be married if we're going to enjoy God's gift 
of sexual pleasures, amen, with someone who God has ordained, amen. He says, not in your excess lust, amen, even as the Gentiles which know not God. He said, not only that, but that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. So we're not supposed to defraud one another, or defraud anybody in any matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such as we also have forewarned you and testified. So no tricky stuff. No manipulating, robbing, and tricking people and deceiving people for their goods. Don't defraud anybody. Amen. For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. So God called us unto holiness. So we ought to please God with our life, a life of sanctification and a life of holiness. Amen. Amen. So we have to be able to say, I'll just say yes, Lord. Yes to your will and yes to your way. Amen. Just like Paul did. Paul surrendered unto the Lord. The Bible lets us know he was on his road, on the road to Damascus, ready to kill some more Christians. Amen. But God stopped him in his tracks and dealt with him. And the Bible says, he said unto the Lord, who are you, Lord? Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said unto Paul, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Amen. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And so the Bible tells us, and Paul trembling and astonished. He was astonished because Paul thought that he was doing the right thing. He stood for the law of Moses. He was the Pharisee of the Pharisees. Amen. And so all these other people coming, Jesus coming, talking about he's the Messiah and things like that. Paul wasn't having it. He didn't believe it. He did it ignorantly in unbelief. So he persecuted the people of God. But when God came to him, he dealt with them. He said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord answered him and told him, he said, I am Jesus whom thou persecuted. You're persecuting me. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. You can't go, you can't do anything against the truth. I am the truth. Amen. And the life. He said, you can't do anything against me. And, and so Paul was astonished when he found out that he was going against Jesus when he thought he was just going against the Christians. But he found out that day that Jesus was the Messiah. And it says Paul was trembling and he was astonished because he was shocked because he thought he was right. Amen. So there's a lot of people out there today thinking that they are on the the right road and on their way to heaven, but they don't have the full truth of what God wants. And so God will let you know what the full truth is. And when he reveals the full truth to you and what he wants you to do, that's the point that you say, yes, Lord. And so Paul said here, Lord, what would thou have me to do? Amen. So here he's submitting to the Lord. Now he's on the road to Damascus and he was going to uh, persecute some more saints, but God let them know it's me that you're persecuting. And so he says, oh, well, I surrender. What do you want me to do, Lord? And so, and the Lord said unto him, arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but they didn't see any man. And Saul rose from the earth and when his eyes were open, he saw no man, so he was temporarily blinded. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, and neither did he eat or drink. So he fasted now, you know, and there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And he said unto, and to him, said the Lord in a vision. So the Lord sent a vision to Ananias. And he said, behold, here my Lord, so here I am your servant, Lord, here I am. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he's praying, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight from God. Isn't that funny how God tells people, you know, what he wants them to do? He says, I want you to go to the street that's called Straight and look for Saul. He's in the house of Judas. Amen. He said, because I sent him a vision and he saw a man named Ananias. He saw you coming in, Ananias, and putting your hands on him that he might receive his sight. And Ananias answered, now here's the hesitation here with Ananias. He, he hesitated, Lord, I have heard of many of this man, how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. So Saul did a lot of evil. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on the name, on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, 
Go thy way. So here he is. God is giving Ananias instruction now. Go thy way. For he is a chosen vessel. So sometimes we say God might ask you to do some things that might seem to be dangerous. Or it might cause some type of suffering. But God had to assure Ananias that, hey, go thy way. For he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way. So he was obedient. He sought to please the Lord. Amen. He said, I'll just say yes, Lord. Amen. So Ananias went his way and entered into the house and put in his hands on Saul or on him saying, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared to thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scaled. So Ananias was used by the Lord to lay hands on the great apostle Paul that he might receive his sight. And he received sight forthwith and he arose and was baptized. Amen. Because God gave him instructions. He needed to be baptized. And when he had received meat, he had ate some food. He was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached. And remember he said preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ might seem foolish, but it was the will of the Lord. And Paul straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. So he found out that Jesus Christ is the son of God, a man whom he was persecuting ignorantly before. So he surrendered to the will of the Lord. So we have to say yes Lord, yes to your will, yes to your way, because it's going to be for our best interest, amen, and it is to please the Lord, and that we might receive a reward at the end of our days, even eternal life, whom only God can give, amen, only God can give eternal life, amen, so we say yes, he say, I choose before you life and death, will you surrender to me, or will you choose another way, but God told us and admonished us, choose life, amen, so Hopefully, it's your personal declaration on today. I'll just say yes to the Lord. I'll just say yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. I seek to please the Lord. That's the best thing any of us can do. So whatever God is telling you to do, make sure you say yes. Amen. God bless you on today.